All right, hello everybody and welcome from Staffordshire Services, just off the M6 outside of Birmingham. It's very glamorous, I tell you, very glamorous. Actually, it is quite nice. I've, I've, been, uh, I've been able to stop, get cleaned up, have some food. I've got the solar panel tilted, so we're getting loads of charge. And I've been doing some work on the laptop for the past hour. Um, and now we are going to continue on this final leg of the photography road trip. We are heading north to the Lake District and I'm planning a big hike. Well, no, no, moderate hike. Yeah, moderate hike for sunset tonight. So a lot of driving to do and then a lot of hiking. <laughs> First time I've ever fueled up at a services. Never again. Talk about being fleeced. That bottle of water come with gold dust. Just where it was needed. Claiming back as night. Cloistered in injustice. Dead. I think we may have to change our plans. Uh, the plan was to hike up Great Gable. Great Gable is the best, one of the best peaks in the lakes, I think, because it offers fantastic 360 views. But as I was driving in, I could see that that entire valley, uh, well, all of Seathway and Borrowdale and all of the peaks around there were completely shrouded in clouds. So for me to go up to Great Gable would be um, pointless from a photographic standpoint because I'm not likely to see anything when I get up there. However, there is a peak behind me called Dale Head. And it's about 100, yeah, 150 meters lower than Great Gable. So I'm hoping that that isn't in the cloud. And then that should, I've never been, but should give me fantastic views. Looking at the map, it looks like it should give me great views. And the footpath for that is just behind me. So yeah, slight switcheroo, but uh, I think we'll give it a go. I don't know, you've kind of, you know, you've got to be in it to win it. Might get up there, might be fantastic. Might get some stunning light, might get all my clearing. Oh, it could be fantastic. Or it could just be a, a bit of a pea soup rain fest. So I do kind of feel, I feel like I've taken the easy road here, the easy road. I looked at my map. And I was looking at Great Gable and I thought, oh, and I looked at the weather and I thought, oh, and then I saw Dale Head and I thought, oh, that looks, you know, like it's got potential. But the truth is, it's a mile hike, 400 meters elevation gain, as easy as they come. But uh, I do think I'm using the weather as a bit, as a bit of an excuse. So I'm just, I'm just tired. You could probably tell um, through the quality of the video that I'm tired. Has there been any drone footage today? No. The slider? No. Multiple angles of the van driving down the road. No, I'm tired. with you when I was in the van in the car park I didn't want to leave I was tired man I was honestly I was quite close to just like sacking this video off and driving home I tell you what that would have been a mistake this is glorious I had no idea what to expect from this hike I literally looked at it on the map and thought oh, that looks pretty straightforward it's actually a bit tougher than I thought to get up here but well, the views are fantastic there's a lot of rain around I hope we don't get rained on but it's these conditions of rain and cloud and, and sunlight 
that make for those really special moments. So the area that I was going to hike to, which is over there, is just becoming more and more enveloped in clouds, so I, would, I just wouldn't be able to see a thing. Yeah, and more and more smug by the minute. I think I made the right choice today. So we're at the stage now where it's just a case of putting on the long lens and just honing in on the landscape. I mean, I've got a shot here uh, where there's a nice bit of light just hitting this saddle and we have layers and then lots of low clouds. So it's very abstract, you know, it's a classic Lakeland view. Um, quite a nice sort of vignette of the landscape. That's kind of the stuff that I'm shooting. Actually, this is quite nice, F16 focus on the distant fell and it's just a very subtle, soft bit of light, but uh, just adds depth and atmosphere. And that's the kind of photography that I really enjoy. You know, it's those, those pockets, those moments of time, those, those little, little windows into the landscape that are there one minute, gone the next. Uh, this is a nice example. I feel like uh, the best is yet to come and I am optimistic and I'll explain why. After, uh, after I show you this image. Wind's picked up a little bit, just marginally, and because my exposure is ranging into several seconds now, I've just dropped the tripod. It makes no difference to my composition, so I'm looking straight down the valley towards Skidor, shrouded in cloud. The sun is minutes away from dropping from beneath the cloud cover. And it's at that moment that I hope to get this beautiful shot. This is a stunning view. Um, I'm not going wide. I'm uh, probably at 60, well, I'm at 64 mil, which I think is probably the equivalent of about 50 mil on a full frame camera, because this is a uh, medium format. Oh, it's the waiting game, man. It's just, sometimes it's enjoyable, sometimes I get agitated, sometimes I'm relaxed, sometimes I'm anxious. Today, now, very agitated, very anxious. The battery's really low on this camera, so excuse me if it just cuts off, but um, we haven't had the light I was hoping for yet. I, the sun is playing tricks on me. There's like an optical illusion. I can see the reflection of the sun in the sea, but that sun's not dropping. Yeah, it should be sunset now. <laughs> this, is, this is blowing my mind. So we can see the sun just starting to peak beneath that thick layer of cloud, which has been covering the hills for so long now. Uh, let's just see when it drops. Let's see if we get any light on my subject, because at the minute we don't. Hang on. Let's turn you to the subject. Okay, there's the subject. Gray, 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 gray. Hopefully, <laughs> I really hope we'll get some light on that. <sighs> well, unfortunately, it wasn't to be. We, I, we never got any amazing light. It looks, looked like it was gonna happen. It really looked like it was gonna happen. At one point, there was a nice red sky, which was actually caused by the sun's reflection off the sea, which is interesting. But that's the way it goes, that's landscape photography. It's a game of patience and perseverance, and you don't always get epic conditions, no matter how promising it looks. I'm gonna walk back, all the way back down to the van. It's getting dark, so I'm gonna get out of here and uh, find a park up and make a plan for sunrise. <laughs> So it is a shame that there was a bit too much atmosphere uh, for the sun to be able to penetrate as it started to set, um, so there was no colour. But I don't regret going up, and I am a little bit disappointed, but I'm not that disappointed. I think the more the more experienced I become, the less I'm bothered by 
perhaps missing light or light not happening or making mistakes uh, like dead batteries a couple of videos ago um, because I know there's always tomorrow there is always going to be another moment of like wow you know those moments happen all the time and the more you get out there and put yourself out there the more you'll witness them and photograph them so I'm gonna find a park up and um, relax with a cup of tea and make a plan for tomorrow morning. Right. So that is me parked up for the night. Found a lovely little spot that is ideal for two scenarios tomorrow. So I've got options. If I wake up and it's raining, like it has been doing most of tonight, then I'm close by to a beautiful woodland that I have never really seen before in the springtime. So that'll be interesting. If I wake up full of energy and there's beautiful clear skies and fantastic atmosphere, then there is a hike I can do. <laughs> Well, I, I don't know, we'll see. It's not that big of a hike, uh, but it's a beautiful spot and I was there a couple of years ago, so if I do go on the hike, you might recognise it from previous videos. Okay, things I'm going to change about the van or things I'm going to add to the van that I've learned in the past four days. One is an obvious one and that's the alcohol stove. That is going. Alcohol should be for consumption only. My kitchen tabletop work surface area, that vinyl that I put down is no good for hot drinks. <laughs> so it just melts underneath this cup. Um, so, I mean, we were gonna change that anyway. That's getting changed as soon as I can, well, as soon as I've got a bit of free time, we'll get a nice wooden top for the whole thing. It'll look much smarter. I need somewhere to mount my fire extinguisher and <laughs> some to mount kitchen roll this is why this is why it needs mounting this is the most handy item you can have in a van I think get through this stuff like no man's business constantly wiping the floor and tabletops and uh, washing up and that kind of thing but it just rolls all over the van and before you know it it's just mental it's just ah, kitchen roll everywhere so somewhere to hold that and obviously I need to fit a cab curtain because that, that those tin foil things are well obviously that's a temporary measure it's useless <laughs> I think the truth is you could tinker forever with the van and I probably will I tell you what I am happy with I am happy with the layout like <clears throat> I feel like I've got so much floor space and this bed slash couch it's just perfect I don't know why why anyone would ever want a foldy down rock and roll bed when you when you've had this there's no going back let me tell you that and as well as that i think i mentioned this in a previous video these these little uh spotlights here these flexible reading lights oh yeah gotta put a couple of those in your van they are so handy right that's uh that's about all from me anyway i've been waffling on for too long i'm gonna enjoy my tea and biscuits and have a good night's sleep and see you guys in the morning. Good night. Yeah. Well, good morning everybody, <laughs> and welcome to the last day, the final day of the road trip. So, I opted to go for a short hike this morning rather than go to the woods because, as you can see, it's uh, beautiful weather. I did leave a bit late, but that's because I had the best sleep ever, and it's really difficult to get out of bed. Um, so it's a bit of a rush to get here, and, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's a lovely view. There's going to be nothing um, ultra fancy about the photography this morning. It is very much a case of get up, walk, take the shot. You know, the hard work is getting up here. 
The rest should be pretty easy. But that's what I want, man. It's been a hard week. I'm tired. Just want some good light and a bit of atmosphere. So I'm 96% certain that that peak there, the one in the center of frame right now, yeah, that's where we were stood last night. So the light's uh, starting to happen now. The sun is rising uh, behind you, so opposite to the view I'm looking at. I think I'm, uh, I'm gonna go for a pano. Good old panoramic. I haven't shot a pano with this camera yet, so what better place to do it than here? It's gorgeous right now. We've got that beautiful magenta pink light that you get at sunrise as it starts to hit the peaks. And I've got a lovely pano, just a big view of the entire scene. And as I was shooting the pano, and as the light was starting to happen, it was then that I started to see other compositions. So I got my pano, and then I started to train in, focus on, on other areas of the landscape. And I've got a shot right now, which is fantastic. And the best thing is, it's a shot of the peak that we were stood on last night. It's bathed in magenta, glorious light with low mist at the base of the image. It's just gorgeous. can manifest themselves in many different ways all of the time. And that's the beauty of landscape photography. So if you're out and about and you don't see an image immediately, it's always worth just waiting for the conditions to change because images will just appear like that. And that is exactly what's just happened in a very frantic minute, which I didn't film because it was too frantic. Uh, but basically the light started to fall down the mountain. So a shadow started to move down the mountain as the cloud to the east blocks the sun. And what that created was this very abstract, bizarre scene where we have trees, distant trees on the other side of the lake, silhouetted against this sort of middle band of light that was on the mountain. So we had silhouette trees backlit by the light on the mountain and then no light. And then the mist rolled in. Are you with me? It's all very, lots of elements here. And then the mist rolled in and kind of blocked all of the mountain and what we were left with was a reflection of silhouetted trees against this band of light on the mountain. It was super cool. So frantically, I'm changing lenses, got the long lens out, got my composition. Didn't realize I was on bulb mode. <laughs> so like, I'm like, why, why is my images overexposed? What's going on? Anyway, got rid of bulb mode and um, got the shot, I think. It might be my favorite shot of the morning. Um, it's just great, just, ah. Oh. I just love photography, I really do. Ah, oh, what a morning. This was the first photograph I took as the light started to fall down the distant hills and it shows much more clearly what I was talking about. This image is okay, but it was whilst taking this photograph that I noticed a shot within a shot. This is the image of the trip. It's ethereal, it's abstract, and most importantly, it's different from the many thousands of photographs taken from this viewpoint. 
This is a close-up of the reflection in the water which has been flipped upside down and I'd love to know your thoughts on this image in the comments below. Is it a dream image or is the image too dreamy? <laughs> just just let me let me know your thoughts on this one. Well, it's hard to leave this place but the best of the light has definitely now happened. So back to the van, pack up and time to head home. Right then, we are out of here. If you've enjoyed this video, if you've enjoyed the series, give it a like. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing. Uh, it's a massive help. So thank you guys so much for watching. Right now, I am about to destroy the peace and quiet and serenity of the Lake District National Park with my squealing belts. Wait for it. Oh no, it's okay, that didn't last very long. Sometimes it goes on longer than that. Alright guys, until next time, bye for now. If you fancy supporting this channel, I have a book available which you can click on on this screen just here. And I have also created a playlist of all of my on location videos. If you're new to this channel, you can go back and watch my entire back catalogue <laughs> should you so desire.